Okay, lecture 22. Got a lot of stuff to do here. I'm going to move pretty quickly. So the first question is, how are mole and Avogadro's number related? Well, a mole is a quantity of a given substance containing Avogadro's number of particles. And Avogadro's number is the number of atoms of carbon-12 in a 12-gram sample of carbon-12. So write that first. Avogadro's number is defined number of carbon-12 atoms in a exactly 12-gram sample of carbon-12. That's how we define it. So we take 12 grams of carbon-12 and the number of atoms that we find, carbon-12 atoms, is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. So Avogadro's number is based off of, of a definition of, of, of this is how we find it. And then a mole, one mole, is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd of anything. Uh, atoms, ions, oranges, cars. Uh, so a mole is a number and the number was defi is, uh, is defined uh, as Avogadro's number. So it seems like the same thing, but when you're talking about Avogadro's number, you, you mean only for the number of carbon-12 atoms. A mole then takes that number and expands it to whatever, whatever, and usually it's going to be molecules or ions. How are molecular mass and molar mass related? Well, we saw that in an earlier lecture that uh, um, methane, uh, one... Uh, one methane molecule is one, uh, 16 AMU. An AMU is 1.67 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms. It's very small. One mole of methane molecules equals 16 grams. So that's why you might have uh, notice that the Avogadro's number is not a nice round number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. You might say, well, why would they do that? Why don't they just make it 1 times 10 to the 24th and be done? It's because by defining it as that number, then when you have one molecule or one ion, it has a certain number of AMUs. One mole of that same substance has, is, uh, has a mass of with the same number in grams. So one molecule, 16 AMU, one mole of these molecules, 16 grams. And that's true for any, th any of these uh, compounds we'll deal with. Now, so this one is pretty short because it's going to be the same math as we've done before. We're using the same numbers from the periodic table. Now we're just going to call them grams. So for carbon, one mole of carbon is 12 grams. Four moles of fluorine, because we're now it's molar mass, it's one mole of CF4, contains one mole of carbon, four moles of fluorine, so that's four times 19 grams, and that comes up to be 88 uh, grams per mole. So you could say per mole, uh, if you want to talk about, you could say that the molar mass is 88.0 grams per mole of carbon uh, tetrafluoride, or you could just say that for one mole of carbon, uh, one mole of carbon tetrafluoride is 88 grams. Water, same thing here. One mole of water is two moles of hydrogen, and I'm going to just two times one and one mole of oxygen. Again, if you're really, uh, you know, particular and you want that 1.01, uh, feel free. Well, you're going to find. 99% of the time that uh, it won't have any effect on the answer if you are going to three significant figures. And again, uh, so molar mass, one mole of water is 18 grams. One molecule of water is 18 AMU. All right, now, what is the mass in grams of one bromine uh, atom? Okay, so the molar mass of bromine 79.9 grams per mole. Well, one mole of bromine uh, atoms, you can put bromine here, is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd bromine atoms. So 17.9 grams of bromine is one mole of 
bromine atoms, just make sure that we cancel everything properly. So boom, boom, then we're, uh, we have uh, 79.9 grams uh, divided by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of bromine. And we end up with 1.33 times 10 to the minus 22 grams per atom. A uh, very small number. It's unusual to measure the mass of an atom, but it's, it's nice to know that we can. Now let's do it for a molecule. Well, we have to figure out for carbon tetrabromide, it's 12 grams plus 4 times 79.9. Uh, and that would easily, you could certainly change that to 80 if you like. So it's uh, 332 grams per mole. So 332 grams per mole. And I'm going to skip that it's carbon tetrabromide so that we, you could certainly, grams of te uh, carbon tetrabromide moles of carbon tetrabromide atoms or molecules. And one mole of these molecules uh, contains 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd of them. I'm going to put molecule down here. And this comes up to be 5.51 times 10 to the minus 22 grams per molecule. So one molecule of carbon tetrabromide weighs 5.51 times 10 to the minus 22. And then just to show that you can do it for ionic compounds as well, uh, what is the mass in grams of one formula unit? You've got to make sure it's not molecules now because it's an ionic compound, but uh, this is going to be, we can figure this out pretty easily, that it's 58.5 grams per mole. The molar mass of sodium chloride is 58.5. And then solve it as we've done many times here. So moles of formula units. times uh, one mole of formula units is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd formula units. Ah, and then everything cancels and we're left with uh, 9.77 times 10 to the minus 23. Make sure we're on page here. 23 grams per formula unit. So if you have one sodium ion and one chloride ion together, they weigh 9.77 times 10 to the minus 23 grams. All right, now what else can we do here? Well, we have um, grams to moles and moles to grams. We can do uh, this where we have 15.6 grams of bromine tetrafluoride. If we're going to change this to moles, well, we need grams of bromine trifluoride on the bottom and then moles on top. At least that's, that looks like that's where we're heading. Now, if we don't have a conversion factor for that, we'll have to split it up like we've done for uh, centimeters to nanometers. We had to go through meters, but let's look and see if we have what we need. Yeah, moles of bromine trifluoride in grams, we know that. That's the molar mass. So one. 0 0.00 and um, cheating a little bit here to get the uh, answer quickly. So we'll figure out the formula, uh, the uh, the formula weight, or actually the molar mass of uh, bromine trifluoride. Grams cancel. We're left with moles. 15.6 divided by 137, and uh, this is not exact. We, we have as many, sig uh, this is three significant figures, so you want to make sure this has as many, that, that many significant figures or more, just so that you don't lose them in the end. And since we can, um, since our, our number here, we can make this as, as large of a significant, uh, as many significant figures as you want from the periodic table. If we have three here, we should have three here. And we end up with, uh, oh, what do we end up with here? So we have a 0 0.114. 0 0.114 moles bromine trifluoride. And then uh, this 1.245 grams of sodium carbonate. And uh, we use the molar mass again, 106 grams of sodium carbonate. That is one mole 
of sodium carbonate and cancel and we end up with 0 0.00231 moles of sodium carbonate and putting your answer as moles is, is partially right you should always have the the moles of what and we probably want to change this into this form Now we're going to convert back, back. We have moles to grams. Okay, so we have 6.11 moles of ethanol. Well, moles have to be on the bottom, and grams have to be on top. So now we're we're still using um, the molar mass. We're just flipping that uh, conversion factor. One mole of oops, of ethanol is 46.0 grams ethanol, boom, boom. And this comes up to be uh, 281 grams of ethanol. And I've been meaning to say this, I'm gonna just work this out as a talk here. Uh, sometimes it seems like I'm, I really have a lot of trouble writing. <laughs> and I'm, I'm scribbling, well, what it is, I'm trying to write underneath the camera so I'm writing at a very odd angle all the time so that you can see straight down onto the paper. So I uh, apologize for that. I try to, anytime I seem to mess, uh, when I mess up, I try to re rewrite it. But I might say, hey, man, he really has a lot of trouble with that pen. <laughs> it's because I'm reaching across the table and writing at a, a very high angle. But anyway, just in case you were wondering. So we have 1.45 grams of zinc iodide. So we have... Um, I did this one just so that we have a, a number that's not a, you know, 125, something that's always really a nice simple number. Here we have scientific notation, and we convert to grams. And I should do uh, really quickly here, do one out, uh, um, say how many molecules are there in 15.5? six grams of BRF3. So just to show that you can do this, because this is one last step that you can take, uh, it's just like we did earlier on uh, the earlier calculation. I want to use the same numbers just so we can do this quickly. But if you are asked to find out how many molecules, well then you go the next step. Grams cancel, now we're left with the moles. Every mole of bromine trifluoride is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. So it's using what we already knew, but just taking it and uh, adding this into our calculation. Whoops. And as you might guess, this should be an enormous number. So 6.86 times 10 to the 22 whoops, molecules. Of bromine trifluoride, and go. Let's go back the other way. Let's say we have um, 3.37 times 10 to the um, 12th molecules of of ethane. This is a nice one to do. Uh, oh, let's see. Let's see. How many grams is so that's not grammatically a little, <laughs> a little suspect, but um, how many grams is um, 3.37 times 10 to the 12 molecules of ethanol? So uh, convert, basically convert this many molecules of ethanol to grams. So 3.37. And you see this is a large number. This is a 3.37 trillion molecules. So you might think it's a large, your mass would be a large one, but... Uh, man, we've got to write the whole thing out, don't we? No choice, and then uh, we could say that. Um, but since it's such a Avogadro's number is such a large number here, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules, and that's one mole of ethanol. Now, I don't really like to do this too much, but we'll go down to the next level here. And um, ethanol, 46 grams of ethanol is one mole. So just imagine, imagine this continuing on. So molecules cancel, moles cancel. So if this was up here, 
And we end up with, let's see, 3.37 divided by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd times 46. And this comes up to be 2.58 times 10 to the minus 10 grams of ethanol. Oops. So even though it seems like a large number, it's so much smaller than uh, Avogadro's number, which is uh, the one mole, that uh, we end up with a, a very small mass. Not as small as when we have just one molecule, but even a trillion molecules uh, is a very small mass. So that, that actually was just thrown in there, but just to so, show that we can also go, we have molecules, moles, and grams, and we can go between all of them with these different uh, types of conversions.